What is going on, everybody? It's Chris. Another simulation, the 2020 Miami Hurricanes, the 2020 Ohio State Buckeyes. Huge matchup here. If you like this matchup, if you like the, all these simulations, hit the like button. And also be sure to subscribe. Hashtag ITU10K. We're getting so close to 10,000 subscribers, and we're definitely going to do that this year and hopefully very soon. And we're playing this game at Ohio State. You see Miami in the white uniforms and the orange pants. Definitely curious to see how this one goes. Ohio State obviously has national title aspirations this year. Miami's looking to win the ACC and have a great year after their disappointing 2019 season behind the leadership of quarterback De'Eric King, who is absolutely the real deal. So again, with these simulations, these two teams are not on the schedule. Maybe they play in a bowl, who knows? But really it's just to get these two teams on the field together. A lot of new faces. You look at Ohio State, they bring back a number of guys, but they go in elevated roles. Obviously, they lose some of their playmakers last year. But with Justin Fields, a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate, a chance to have another great year. So you have to feel good if you're Ohio State. So let's get this thing started. Miami freshman Jalen Knighton with the return. I'm very curious to see how they use Jalen Knighton this year. Obviously, you bring back Cameron Harris, running back as a junior. He's looking to take... Again, take that elevated role as a lead back. But Jalen Knighton was there in the spring. He's a guy that made plays at Deerfield Beach. He's a dual threat guy in the sense that he can catch the ball of the backfield in addition to take carries. And I'd like to see him in the return game as well. A playmaker that you're definitely excited for in this new offense for Miami. A guy that they can move around a little bit. There's going to be enough enough opportunities for the playmakers in this offense and you see Miami comes out here four wide it's what you want to see so they go handoff to Harris nice solid run but I'm again Jalen Knight very impressed with what I saw from him in high school I think his playmaking ability his shiftiness his ability to get to the perimeter and make plays upfield Certainly a great addition, not just for 2020, but moving forward. A guy that I think has a potential for a big-time future at Miami. Just a tough blitz there. Borland comes in. Essentially right up the middle. Ohio State runs us 3-4, but yeah, that's a tough, a tough sack to give up now. It's third and 12 for Miami. And Borland with a nice sack from the linebacker spot. So Miami's got a tough spot here. And again, these two teams haven't faced each other in a while. 2011, they played in Miami. Hurricanes won that one. And 2010 was the last time Miami went to Columbus. And I remember covering that game. And I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, you look at Ohio State as one of the premier programs in college football and obviously the historic stadium. It's really cool when you get the opportunity to go into stadiums like that and see what it's all about. And especially when, you, when you're a team like Miami that plays in the ACC that does not have a number of those high-profile programs. And it's just really cool when these teams get on the schedule. I think that's the biggest thing that you guys have probably enjoyed with these simulations, not just seeing your Hurricanes in action, not just seeing what De'Ara King can do, but you get to see them against teams that you don't get to see very often. We had a whole article on InsideTheU.com, 11 programs that would be fun matchups for Miami to face. And I remember with that article, it was almost surprising that some of these schools have not faced each other in so long. That's why you see these simulations. You get a chance to see them on the field together. It creates a little bit of discussion. Drop in the comments. If you have an idea of what this game would look like if they did face each other this year. If they did, obviously you're looking at both teams having good seasons. Miami would have to elevate with what they did last year. You figure Ohio State's going to be there unless there's some sort of major injury, but definitely tons of playmakers on both sides of the ball for the Buckeyes. So here we go. Challenge for Miami's defense. And this is definitely an exciting newcomer for the Buckeyes. Trey Sermon, transfer from Oklahoma. 
He's a big time player for the Sooners. Slides over to Ohio State, essentially steps in for Dobbins. It's going to be a lead back, most likely. That's what you're expecting. You're expecting a huge year for Trey Sermon. Does not, I, I'm aware, he does not have his jersey assigned based on what I saw. He wore four at Oklahoma. That number's tied up for the, for the Buckeyes here. Nice run by Sermon there, just talking about him. So I gave him the eight jersey. Who knows what it'll end up with? Maybe you guys know. Yeah, Ohio State's one of those teams that definitely utilizes the double numbers. Miami as well. You guys know my personal beliefs on it, but it's definitely good to see these guys out here. A lot of jersey number changes for the Buckeyes. Notice that. And I think, you know, if you're Miami, with you know, and obviously where Ohio State was before Fields got in there, obviously operating at a high level, and steps in, and you see the playmaker that he is, and the plays that he's capable of making, you see it all play out on the field during the season. With Miami, you're looking at Justin Fields and just hoping De'Ara King makes a huge impact the way Fields did, had a great season, the whole thing. You're hoping De'Ara King has a great season for Miami stepping in in his first and only season for the Hurricanes. Just a big time playmaker at Houston, obviously a step up in competition. But based on everything I've seen, everything I've read about people asking, you know, that have been around De'Ara and kind of listening to him speak and sharing his story. I've had some articles again on inside the U.com about how he, his progression there at Manville taken over there as a starting spot, very competitive school, but everyone, there's a nice run by fields there. That's a great tackle by Miami closes him down. 96 John Ford looking for one of those big senior years. See 95 in the background, Jalen Phillips, another guy to be, Really excited about if you're Miami. Fields almost had that hole looking to get that first down. So Miami closed it out. That's good to see for Miami. But everything I've read, everything I've seen, everything I've heard, processed, that kind of thing, everyone expects Dierk to be able to make that adjustment. He's done it essentially his whole football career. Why would this be any different? Certainly higher expectations at Miami. Almost jumped out. Oh, no, I don't know what he's doing there. I thought he jumped outside, but I was looking at the wrong spot. But So, yeah, definitely definitely reason to be excited about Derek, and definitely maybe there's some hesitation because of how last season went. You don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I definitely believe in his abilities. I believe in the Miami offense with him at quarterback. So we'll see how it goes. So here we go. Miami's got another chance. Only doing a quarter of action. I didn't mention that earlier, but these are just sneak peeks showing you one quarter of action, what it might look like. There's been some full game ones. I think some of you guys like those as well. Again, that blitz off the outside. That's tough. That's Sean Wade there, number 24. He's looking for a big year for the Buckeyes from the cornerback spot. Just a lot of speed coming off that edge. Miami unable to pick up the blitz. And I think you guys have seen at left tackle, Jared Williams is in there. Graduate transfer from Houston, made his announcement recently. He can play left or right tackle. I think his best spot for this offensive line would be left tackle based on the experience. It eases some of the pressure off Zion Nelson stepping into his sophomore year. I think that would be a good spot for him. Again, here's the offensive line. They're going to have the ability to mix things up a little bit. Especially with DJ Scape. He's the interesting one. Because of all the guys, he's the one that's most suited to be able to play guard or tackle. And with that freedom, it allows other guys to kind of slot in different spots. Navon Donaldson's a guy to keep an eye on in terms of being healthy. 
And again with this offensive line struggling there. There's 60 Zion Nelson. I think it's more just Ohio State defense is pretty good. Looking to be one of those dominant defenses in college football once again. Jonathan Cooper there, 18. Coming off the edge. I remember being in, in the game for Columbus. In Columbus. And obviously diff disappointment for Miami not to win that game. Ohio State was ranked two at the time. Miami, I think, was 12. But I remember walking around the stadium before the game. You see the band. You know, just all, all those neat things about college football. Just that real true atmosphere around the stadium. Everybody's excited about the squad. Little disappointing. Not going to lie. This is a little disappointing for Miami here. Got a flag on the play there, but a little disappointing. You're not seeing Miami being able to move the ball. But again, just one quarter of action. Takes some time for these teams to get in a groove. So penalty there. Ronnie Hickman giving Miami a first down. So you get a little bit of taste of Miami's offense back on the field. And yeah, be sure to hit the like button if you haven't yet. If you like these simulations, obviously drop in the comments what you want to see next. What teams do you want to see next? You've seen multiple teams already, but there's more teams to go. You guys have seen Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Michigan. You've seen North Carolina. You've seen Penn State. That's a tough throw right there. But yeah, drop in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next. I definitely hear USC quite a bit. I even heard an interesting one the other day, UCF. I thought that was interesting. I think Miami would, would like to see that matchup based on how UCF's been able to climb with their program. And I think most of you, if you haven't yet, go check out that simulation. Full game, 2001 Miami Hurricanes, 2008 Florida Gators. You don't want to miss that. I think you guys will really like that if you haven't seen it yet. Huge pass play right there for D'Eric. Gets in a nice little groove. Finds a sideline to D. Wiggins. That's a nice catch. That's a hard hit, but he held on to it. That's a great play for Miami here in this first quarter of action. Best play of the day on offense. Yeah, takes a hit there. Marcus Hooker there on the on the tackle, but Miami's D. Wiggins able to hang on to it. Only a minute left. You guys see that and you're like, I want to see the second quarter, but only just one quarter of action. And we'll keep it moving. Again, always thinking of new ideas. Had full games, had first to 10 points, first quarters. There's all kinds of things able to do. And real quick, do not miss the 2020 Dynasty Series going on with the Hurricanes. If you haven't jumped on those yet, now is a great time to do so. Go back and watch that Florida State game. If you haven't seen the, the beginning of the season, maybe you just brushed it off. It's not for you, but definitely check out that Florida State game. And then we got a huge stretch late in the season against ranked teams. Got to win the ACC. But I definitely appreciate everybody watching this video. Again, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit the like button and check out the Miami Hurricanes on InsideTheU.com.